And, you know, th those are things that you want to try to do as an offense to where you're playing to your strengths from a personnel standpoint and not getting too over, you know, analytical and, and stuck in that and let that dictate your play calls or how the game flows. There has to be a little bit of um, instincts as, as just understanding your people and putting your guys in best position to win. Playing off what I asked earlier, what does Drew do differently than you've been able to do in previous offenses? Like, what are you going to be able to add this year with him at quarterback because of his strengths? I think time will tell. You know, he hasn't started a game yet, so that's a difficult question to ask for a guy that hasn't started a game yet. How excited are you to find out about, you know, any of your quarterbacks when they get the chance to step on the field? I'm always excited. You know, I mean, this is a, a chance to, to coach a great, the best game ever invented at the best place in, in the world. and with great people around me, a great staff and great players. So I'm always excited. I mean, it's not like, oh, this year I'm more excited. I mean, this is a great opportunity. I'm alive, I'm well, and, and God willing, I, I, you know, have an opportunity to, to get out there and to, to coach these guys and to help this team in, in any way possible that I can. And that's exciting in itself. I apologize if this was asked already. Um, what are your early takeaways from Cephas so far since he's been in the building? It's, it's been tough to give a full evaluation of Cephas because it's just how limited. I mean, I can tell you after a few practices, but we haven't practiced yet. I mean, just been some drill work. And so it, he looks athletic. Um, we knew that coming into it. Um, he, he's a really good route runner. He's got really good hands. He's got a really good skill set. But, you know, on top of that, I just need more, more familiarity with him. And, more work with him, you know, to be tough. And it, you haven't been able to see him go one-on-one -on -one yet, you know, with my eyes and haven't been able to see him compete against another human being. So it's going to be an incomplete eval right now. Yeah, and on the basis of wide receiver, we talked in the spring a little bit about Keandre stepping up into that number one role. Um, how would you evaluate, you know, his status there at the end of the spring and, you know, what exactly does it take to be a number one guy? I mean, he, he's on schedule, and, uh, you know, he just, uh, in my opinion, needs to continue to do the things that have gotten here to where he is right now to be even able to have this conversation of him being wide receiver number one. And we're going to need all our guys. We're going to need the whole entire room. Um, and, and, you know, as long as they're, they're competing hard and focusing on the things that they can control, I think that's, that's how you get to where you want to be. Um, as far as what your role is on the team, um, just play with tremendous effort and, and come with a good attitude every day and do all the things that, uh, that help you do that with rest and recovery and nutrition and um, make sure that obviously he's taking care of the academics as well. That's important. Um, but just having a good attitude and doing those things and, and he should be fine. We know Drew has enormous potential. Just, you know, and, you know, he could be a really elite quarterback. What are the benefits to having, a, you know, like a top quarterback, you know, like that can, you know, where the sky's the limit? What's the benefit of having a top quarterback? Yeah, yeah basically, question. yeah, basically what, what can that provide for you guys? You know, because we've seen, you know, with teams that have made the college football playoff, a lot of them recently have had that kind of quarterback. Well, I mean, having an elite quarterback, and, and for some teams that's a difference, right? You, you could argue that the, the teams who in the NFL who, who make the playoffs have elite quarterbacks, and, and um, it's a key position, um, that's for sure. But I think what what elite quarterbacks can do, not saying that we're there yet, right? I mean, we're not saying that. You're asking me a question that's kind of leading me in a direction. You ask me, what do elite quarterbacks do for teams? So what elite quarterbacks do for football teams is make – make plays that when they break down or they're tough to make for an average person or an average quarterback, instead of it being incomplete, they complete it. On third and 10, pulling the ball down and escaping and moving to the left and making an incredible throw and extending the series. Do you think Drew can be that guy for you guys? I think our, every guy in our room could be that guy. James mentioned at the start of spring practice, he talked about uh, wanting to find receivers that can catch the ball and go 80. From an offensive coordinator perspective, does it matter where that comes from? Because I guess from outside the formation, inside the formation, is, is any of that preferable or easier to design, or is it just? I'm all for 80 yard gains. Okay. Yeah. Inside, outside, from outer space, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Mike, when you, do you remember the first time you saw Drew play in person when you were? 
Um, what, do you, what do you remember from that I, I, night or day? I think it was when James and I went to go see him uh, play in the game and we were able to get on the sidelines. So, what do you remember from watching him that I day? think they scored on, I, I think it was a reverse pass. Their coach is exotic as heck now. He's, he's, uh, he's Larry. A, he, Larry Larry is amazing at what he does. And he told us before the game, he's like, I'm going to reverse pass, you know, first play. And sure enough, he, he did it. And I think it went, I think they scored three touchdowns in their first six plays. I don't think they played a very good opponent. Um, and the game was over basically by the middle of the first quarter. So um, it was just, uh, you, you knew when you when you saw him that he was a heck of a competitor and, and that um, quarterback was written on his forehead. And, you know, he looked apart. And, and uh, you know, more of it sometimes for me is just watching them interact with their teammates. That's a really important part of the evaluation process. You like to see them, in a perfect world, be down by 14 or seven points in the third quarter and see how how they interact then with their teammates. You know, do they have poise? Are, um, are they calm? Um, when things get tough, how, how do they, what's their demeanor like? That's an important part of it. But unfortunately, but it that, was over. Before that night, had you already decided that you were going to pursue him because I don't know the time. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. All right. yep. Thank you. Katron yes, and Nick had excellent freshman seasons. How do you get them to to manage the hype that, that surrounds them and exceed those expectations that they set for themselves? Yeah, uh, the, the goal is every day get better and don't worry about the noise. So we don't we don't listen to the noise. Like you're, you're talking about noise, we're like, what does that mean? Like that's not part of who we are and, and, and what we think about. So it's all about competition. It's all about being the best that you can be that day and a one and no mentality. And we have to beat West Virginia and whatever it takes to be better today. And then tomorrow, handle tomorrow, tomorrow. But when tomorrow, when the sun uh, comes up, we got to be better, you know, than we were yesterday. And that's, that's how you do it, man. I mean, you just try to improve, you know, what you can control and you try to get better as much as you possibly can and focus on the here and now. What do you think? Don't the, worry uh, about uh, noise and expectations uh, and hype. That, that's that's not what we talk about. We don't go into meetings and say, "Hey guys, we're all hyped up." So, like, we got to work harder today because there's a lot of hype around us. That, that doesn't. That's that's nonsense. James talked a lot about the different personnel that you can have at tight end or receiver, and even you have receivers looking at tight ends as the competition to get on the field. Yeah. You certainly know what you can do in the running back yeah. room. How does that factor into what you can do then as an offensive coordinator with the different depth and different personnel that you have in the well, It's challenging because it's a, you know, a lot about formations and getting guys lined up. So just terminology-wise, making sure that we have plans in place, that we go back through the playbook again and make sure that, hey, we've never lined up in this. We may never line up in this. But if we do, you know, it's going to be called you know, in our you know, concept formationally and how we package certain things. So you have to be ready, you know, for, for, for different types of things and, and see things coming and have contingency plans. But that's so that's where the brain, brain too goes. as well, right? As a, oh, as it's a great thing. It's awesome. Flexibility is great. And being very diverse in different types of personnel groupings is really a fun thing to toy around with, you know. And that's, you know, a lot of work and, and organization, a lot of communication, but that, that's what can give you an edge.